Hey there viewers, my name's Strinsky and welcome back to another DCSS Sunday. Where we last left off last week, we got our third victory in a row. And though it didn't really feel like it in both how long it took to get through with our Merfolk Murphy, and as well as how much trouble we had on that run in general. Uh, but the pacing, I will say, largely, of course, as always, due to my own proclivity to play a little bit slowly some of the time, trying to keep it safe and talk things through as well. Uh, but also definitely due to the fact that we were worshipping Shay, who I was not quite as uh, comfortable with as I thought I was to start out, so it ended up putting us in some tricky situations. But we managed to figure it out in the end, and now we're going to be going in trying to get our fourth win in a row here if we can. Sure would be nice. But we're going to be hopping in today with a gargoyle again. And I only say again because before we started this series, we played a gargoyle, but for the sake of a full BCSS win with every species run, let's make sure we hit every species on the list in this little go around. So as for what we want to start out as today, we definitely have a decent number of options. If we pop into the aptitudes here and take a look at gargoyles, they're pretty middle of the road or even solid in most of the aptitudes. The main thing we do have to keep in mind, especially at the start of the game here, is this negative 20% to overall HP. Definitely makes like an early orc priest smiting down on you quite a, a scary concept. But pretty decent defensive skills here, pretty decent evocations in minus one, not too bad. Plus one, not great, but pretty good for invocations. And same with, yeah, for fighting, just a couple negative ones, but pretty solid across the board. And magic has a little more up and down, but still a lot of options there. So the nice thing about Gargoyles is we can pretty much go in as anything and be fairly likely to see some success as well, because the main advantage is, of course, having a perfect resistance to poison, since we're made out of stone, as well as a couple of other resistances tacked onto that. You get Arlek, and you also get one pip of RN, I believe. I should know this off the top of my head, but we'll see it right away anyway. So today, in order to both preserve our win streak here, and also to potentially get through this one a little bit quicker, since I want to get through to a couple of species that both I'm less comfortable with and can learn a little bit of something, and as well as are a little more less commonly played, so might be a bit more interesting to see. So I think I'm going to hop in today with a fighter here, and, hmm, I'm between uh, maces and flails, or axes here. Let's go with blunt weapons and see how it goes today, shall we? And, hmm, guess we will go with a simple Griffy today. Graffy, Grophy. Let's go. Grophy. Steal a random vowel from somewhere in the word gargoyle and just add it on to the uh, usual prefix for the species. And there we go. We got ourselves a name. And okay. Without further ado, let's head in, Grophy. And this time around, I even put a little post it note up on my wall here so I wouldn't forget. We're gonna drop the seed immediately here. I'll just quickly go over and copy this into OBS here. Just in case anyone wants to play along at home, see how they do, or even just depending on what we run into the run, uh, or on the run rather, there definitely may be something uh, that others might wanna check out. It's the usual advantage to seeds in this game is somebody can find a uh, ridiculous like triple acquirement scroll on d2 something like that and everyone can play it at some point and see how it goes for them but okie dokie with that all settled i believe looking good let's go into our usual routine press m to open up our skills set them to manual with our slash there and then probably gonna turn off our defensive skills for now 
And I'm definitely going to be focusing down our weapon skill, just trying to get it to at least uh, an attack per turn delay around there as soon as possible here. Hmm. Maybe I'll keep one defensive skill up in shields. Should be fine anyway, regardless. And then we'll also pop on backslash here, hit A for magical staves as well as, and actually I'll click through the rest just so it's a bit more clear what we're doing here. Boomerang starts, javelins, stones throwing nets, the usual routine for any brute fighter that we're bringing into the dungeon here, and of course all evocables. Definitely want to be on the lookout for, even though it shouldn't matter for a little bit here at the very least. But with that, my mouse, we're into the run here. And again, Gargoyle for the most part is a fairly easy start relative to some of the other species. <laughs> Are you out of rocks yet? There we go. We'll have to be a little careful just, yeah, on the first couple levels, both of the dungeon and for experience levels on their character. We have to be careful not to bite off more than we can chew because we have a pretty decent AC, I guess, to further show off the gargoyle species here and the whole reason why we're on this class today uh so we, yeah we get this little bit of resistance to torment here we get bonus ac that will continue to ramp up as we gain experience levels as well and then there's the immunity to poison that we mentioned one pip of our and our lack as well both the our poison and the our lack are things that some of our runs in this go around have been a little touch and go with so it's nice to just have those right off the bat here and of course, surviving without breathing is nice against enemies that engulf us. And immunity to petrification. Miasma is kind of nice, but I don't see it that often. Maybe this game we will, and we'll be able to take full advantage of that. But with that, yeah, we definitely have a pretty decent baseline defensive ability. And it is just these first little bits that we have to be careful. I'm hoping we don't run into anything too scary on D1, and then D2, we're going to be on the lookout for the aforementioned Orc Priests, because that's very scary. But of course, the usual Null Packs as well will take us out with uh, impunity, for sure, if we happen to run into one of those and get unlucky. Because a nice AC, unfortunately, doesn't totally protect you from a number of enemies all attacking you at the same time every turn because they have reaching pull arms and the whole lot. Okay, what are you wielding? A negative three whip. Alrighty, we will not be stealing that whip to use for ourselves. Just keep it moving here. And it is looking like we're, we're having a fairly standard floor one of the dungeon here, which you love to see. I guess one of the other major things we'll have to get sorted at some point in the early part of this run, and part of the, I guess, the plan for this run here, is, of course, our deity choice. And this time around, I'm, yeah, most tempted, and there you go, even a hobgoblin with a club did a nice chunk of our health there, so that's kind of a good example. Usually they won't hit us, but when they do, can definitely still hurt. Um, but anyway, for which deity I was going to choose here, I'm thinking most of most likely sticking to either the Kleb or Gozeg if I, I'm going to do my best to just sprint through for a victory here because they're pretty powerful gods in general, have a lot of auxiliary effects that we can use to supplement our kind of overall toughness and melee ability. And um, as well as being gods that I just played a decent amount, I guess. But the exception to that, maybe if I find a new sky uh, altar early on here, before I see an altar to either of those two kind of things. So maybe just if we see it on D2, D3 ish. Um, because I haven't had the opportunity to grab an early sky yet since um, having a viewer mention it. Uh, quite a long time ago, I think a month ago or so. And so if I do happen to run across that, 
want to take advantage and check that out, give it a go. Even if it may make the run just a little bit trickier for us, I think we can figure it out on a gargoyle at the very least. However, that is still to say that we'll most likely end up um, not running into one, just probability wise, and potentially, yeah, running with something like Gozeg or McLeb. Which I guess I haven't done on stream, even though I feel like I've overstayed my welcome on them just because of how often I take those two DDs on my own runs, or I used to, I guess, back in, before I st started streaming the game. But, uh, I haven't played it either on stream, so I might check that out. I think Gozeg is probably my favorite. Uh, God to play with. Main reason is definitely for that potion petition. The very first ability you get from Gozeg is just incredibly powerful. Not just because you're able to apply multiple potion effects in a single turn, which is pretty huge, especially since you usually have enough money to kind of sprinkle that throughout any important fights at the very least. Um, but it also is a nice little. Uh, blanking on my mind can't find the word I'm looking for here but I guess a bit of an augmentation on the number of consumables that you have in your game because if you really don't want to waste your last couple heal wounds potions you can always just potion petition off of your buddy goes egg and hope that you get one of the, the three different potions that will heal you in some way which you usually do so definitely partial to go Zag if we get the opportunity, but we'll have to see. Um, hmm. Do I want to bring Natasha upstairs? I think I do. All right, let's focus down Natasha first. I don't like being slowed. Ooh. Might be an early end to us here. Let's see. Claw up to 10 damage and probably hitting us twice per turn. You're probably not hitting us for much through our AC, the little rat here. Ooh, that is unfortunate. I should have slowed down, ironically enough, when we got afflicted by the slow ability, because I definitely threw away a couple turns there. Um, but it's definitely not quite over yet. So we could reach into our bag here, drink one of these potions so we have a decent quantity. Pretty good chance we get a heal of some kind out of that. We do just have to get through this, or in order to get through this, I guess, we do just have to take care of Natasha here, and then she'll respawn somewhere else on the level, and we can just take the rat back downstairs, probably. Deal with that, slow things down, heal up ourselves. So, let's survive the next couple seconds. And you know what? I think we will go with the blue potion here. Perfect. So that was a potion of curing, which is pretty solid. We could still theoretically die, maybe. I don't actually know completely how the uh, damage calculations work, at least um, in terms of how exactly AC reduces the amount of damage that you're taking, so I couldn't do any quick mental math on this, but pretty sure lethal is definitely a possibility here but I'm gonna take a swing at Natasha okay let's see what hit us there Natasha clawed us but dealt no damage the rat bit us okay so Natasha fortunately didn't deal damage either time and this was a rat that dealt one damage so about what I expected from the rat at the very least I think I can afford a couple more turns here perfect and then, you know, I'm actually going to rest here. Perfect. If Natasha showed up or popped out of nowhere, we could have always just ran downstairs, but... Okay. Hmm. Don't want to keep fighting Natasha. I probably should. She's not too tricky to take care of, as long as... Yeah, I don't ignore the fact that we get slowed in the next couple fights here. But... I'm actually just going to click on the map. This is one of the nice advantages that playing offline has over the web tiles is a lot of these UI things, including the mouse here. 
just to make things a little bit simpler for us to sprint around the level. There we go. Oh, dang it, I shouldn't have walked towards her. Should have thrown a po poison dart, is what I was thinking there. But let's take on this fight, and we should be okay here. Perfect. And then just once more to take care of her for good here. We're using a decent number of turns for this early in the dungeon, but it really shouldn't matter too much. And there she is. So let's use our poison darts this time to try and get some extra damage there. Ooh, dang, we got slowed. So this time it's just her, and we do have our curing identified, so I think I'll risk a couple of swings here. Perfect, it was definitely worth it not to waste any consumables there. And we finally put her spirit to rest, and we reached level 5 ourselves, so we're finally getting a little bit of a padding in terms of health here, but still scared for what we may find on this next floor here. Oh, grinder. Jeez. Just all of the early uniques here. Yeah, extremely dangerous. The paralyze is very scary. She does see us. Hmm. This is the kind of fight where normally, if I wasn't going for a victory streak, and especially if I was playing off camera and didn't feel bad about just throwing away a bunch of like wasted time runs and especially in the early game here where it doesn't take too long to get to this point I would probably just run into this fight and go for it because if we do get the kill on Grinder here she gives a decent number of experience points so it definitely puts us ahead but alas I think I should be trying to survive here and it then perfect I was about to say I think I have one more unexplored stairwell shown by the little yellow asterisk here so let's head down here and hope that it's somewhere decently far away from grinder maybe a little bit concerning yes maybe i'll manually walk for the moment here there's a funny one so yeah adders normally some one of the scary enemies you run into at this point in the game gets a little bit more trivial when playing as uh, a species with poison resistance for sure Ooh, Quaslaw. Damn it. Whoops. <laughs> so I tried to press the key there in order to interrupt our auto explorer, and I hit it right after we ran into Grinder. So I waited a single turn here while she just walked towards us. Not great. But I was just going to mention that Quaslaw is an interesting god for sure. Hmm. How much do I want to stick to my earlier statements? So I could pick up Quaslal here. Pretty interesting build. You completely lose your ability to not wake up every monster on the level as you make your way around, but the storm clouds are pretty cool. But no, I think we'll wait for now. There will come a run for you, Quas. We'll go with the the plan for the time being. And okay. Ooh, you know what? I figured out my plan here. Go here, here. Okay, come towards me. Okay, that still works fine. Dang it. I need, uh, I'm watching very closely where she blinks here because I'm trying to drop Grinder into one of these shafts here. Wait, where did she go? Oh, there. Grinder falls through a shaft. Don't know where it happened. Oh, it must be where this dust just got kicked up here. Perfect. That's what we were going for. And now we have this level to explore and have put off that trouble to potentially as early as the next floor, but there's also the chance that she fell down a couple of floors here and by the time we run into her, we'll be much more well equipped for the, the troubles at hand. That's the hope at least. Okay, I guess, yeah, the other side of that is hopefully there's nothing else too scary on this level after running to that. Hey, you, you have. I should take a peek in to you if you're not wearing anything good. Plus four quarters of chaos. Good. I'm always sad when there's something really nice, like a really amazing cloak on you because I definitely never want to kill the poor fellow. 
it's not his fault that he's been locked away in the dungeon all these years. Maybe? I don't know the total backstory in you. I just feel sorry for the, the crazy hammer bro. But okay. We've gone through the first three levels of the dungeon here with a couple of small little hitches, but nothing too bad so far. But we've gathered a decent chunk of consumables here, so maybe we can start taking a peek at some of this stuff. Let's throw on our rings here, a ring of magical power, and a ring of stealth. Okay, neither of which is exceptionally useful. The ring of stealth will just help ambiently here. Well, we don't have anything else in the slot anyway, so that's always a nice get. But okie dokie. Maybe we'll read a scroll here as well. Perfect. We did get identify off of our stack of four scrolls. And, hmm. Which do I wish to identify first today? Maybe we'll go with potions until we find maybe haste or heal wounds. Something that can help us out. <laughs> Berserk rage, that's an interesting one. Let's read another identify here and try it again. This time we'll go for the fizzy red potions. Okay, potions of magic. Between that and the ring of magical power, this runs already making me regret not going with my usual favorite class for gargoyle in terms of just having fun on runs, which is earth elementalist. But that's all right. We'll definitely make do with what we have here. Maybe we'll do one stack of two scrolls, hoping for bog or blink. Immolation. Okay, that's definitely not going to be used for a decent little bit here. Probably will take ourselves out with that kind of nonsense. And now we start to explore D4, hoping that I haven't only dropped Grinder down to here, because unfortunately, we're still not totally prepared for Paralyze in particular. I was hoping to maybe get some willpower but that's i guess a lot to ask for as early as d3 so take what we can get here and just hope that we don't have too much trouble with her whenever we do see her here two worker ants those ones again like the adders pretty scary usually for their poison damage but even without that they hit decently hard there as we saw in the first one we fought at the very least so we're gonna have to careful on that one so I've been pumping my points into strength here, and that's very much just because we're doing a three room run with our gargoyle here. I will say most of the time with a gargoyle, if I'm doing even just five runes, I'll almost always start pumping into intelligence because it's usually fun to get a little bit of spell casting thrown in there with the species. No, I say that for pretty much any species that has aptitudes at all. Um, applicable to spellcasting. Okay, a little bit of a tricky situation there, for sure. The iguana in particular was quite scary, but managed to make it through. Hey, Railbird, how's it going? And we did take a peek or see a peek of the economical temple there, so let's hope that it's not stranded in the middle of the deep water and we'll be able to pop in there real quick. In fact, I probably should have done that before exploring any more out here. Just in case we can toss some of that experience towards gaining piety. Perfect. And we can even fight against the jackals here without having to worry about them stepping into the deep water. And perfect. So we unfortunately didn't run into any really early fun altars that we were keeping an eye out for. There's the club though. Might be going that way. There is this guy, uh, and there's Gozad. Okay. So we could try out this guy for the first time. I'm tempted to, but I think there are a couple of species coming up that I'm very interested in mixing with this. Even if it's um, a species that I end up using short blades on, trying to take advantage of the paralyzed effect that this guy has, get a bunch of backstabs in with uh, the damage being shared between enemies as well. Seems pretty cool. Um, but even besides that, a couple of tricks up our sleeves for the future here. So, because we didn't run into them earlier than expected, let's go with one of the planned two here. 
And I guess I'll break it down real quick where my mind is going here because normally I really like McLeb largely for the fact that on killing enemies you heal a portion of health which is super powerful in fighting through extended encounters and just constantly keeping yourself topped off by taking care of all the little buddies around you. But not only that, McLeb also gives some nice mid-game solutions to problems that melee brutes usually have both in the form of being able to summon in demons and also having a little bit of magic uh, being cast through piety. So that's definitely pretty solid advantage advantages for covering up our weaknesses and giving us some security. But Gozeg is amazing for the potion petition, as I mentioned earlier, that's definitely my number one love. But even the fact that we can both bribe branches in order to make some of the trickier spots in the game a little bit easier for us, and also gift ourselves a bunch of shops and really supplement any of the equipment problems we're having, which has been a bit of a theme for us so far in this entire series. So, maybe our gargoyle buddy here. I'll go with our friend Gozeg, just to even, I guess, show off a, a classic combo that I truly enjoy playing. Running into Gozeg early is always nice because you don't have to pay too much of a tithe. I think tithe is the way to pronounce that word. It's been too long since I actually pronounced it out loud instead of reading it. Not teeth, I don't think. That's that's what babies do and dogs. But anyway. Uh, not too bad just spending 71 coins, I guess, is the point of that. But... Now that we are a follower of Gozeg, I guess we should do a quick peek at the stuff here because, yeah, as mentioned, actually, and something that I kind of forgot is that Piety is just totally not a thing. And instead, we just have access to all of the abilities. And as we have mentioned earlier, we just spend money in order to get some of these effects as well. So it's really nice turning enemies' bodies into gold, especially now that starving is no longer a thing. I used to run into trouble playing too many spellcasters and trying to worship Gozeg and you end up starving to death a lot of the time unless you get lucky with um, certain staff pickups. But nowadays, pretty powerful, especially this distraction effect. The enemies may become distracted by gold. It is amazing for prolonged groups in large fights and for making really powerful scary enemies maybe waste a turn or two just staring at the, the glittering gold baubles and oh my gosh it's been too long since i played darkest dungeon that i immediately fumbled on the very weak attempt for a quote there what is it the only one that fully sticks with me and i'll never forget is overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer because that's a lesson that is exceptionally useful for DCSS as well. It's always important to remember that overconfidence is the folly of many a powerful run. But okay, Shimmering Trident. Definitely intriguing to get an artifact trident because this is eerily similar to how a previous run of ours has gone. So maybe just maybe this will be another Plus 10 trident, I think that was, that will get us through the whole game. Will require a swap of weapons, but might be worth it. What have we got? Okay, plus 11 trident. Pretty awesome. Vorpal uh, branding does mean it deals extra damage to all enemies, don't have to worry about resistances. Unfortunately, our elect already have, but that's kind of a... Uh, an unnecessary, unfortunately, to toss into that because it also has the tacked on resistance from cold and a little bit of intelligence. Okay. It's unfortunate how much experience we've thrown into the maces and flails, but I don't think I can turn down a gift horse like this. Tridents are really nice. They're a one-handed weapon, so I keep using it with my shield, get a little bit of reach, and a plus 11 is going to do wonders for us in the early game here. So I think I will do a, a hard pivot into pole arms. 
Let's see, so if I hold down control and a direction, we're swinging at 1.2 speed with our mace. This will probably be, was it 1.4 it said? 1.4. But, plus 11, definitely not something to sneeze at. It gives us an equivalent to plus 12, plus 20, compared to our 0, 10. So, let's put that on, and in fact I'm going to step away from the shadows that we haven't explored. Because I forgot that I picked up this chainmail, so I'm going to throw that on to give us a little bit more AC. And sorry, yeah, Rillabird pointed out a really nice weapon, definitely. Pretty huge get for the early game here. It's weird how many of these runs we've gotten lucky in that way, because even Murphy had the plus 9 scimitar from pretty much the get-go as well. So one of these days our luck has got to run out, but... I guess it's not today, even though, let's not forget that as we found the Trident, we are talking about the dangers of overconfidence, so it's not a total win to the run yet, just a huge advantage in the early game here. And speaking of advantages we could get in the early game, just taking a quick look at our inventory here, we do have a stack of six scrolls, probably remove curse, could be teleport though, I would like teleport but remove curse, wouldn't necessarily want to waste that at this point in the run here. You know what, I'm going to read our last identify scroll. Now we got three stacks in a potion slot. I'm going to identify those, again hoping for heal wounds. Cancellation. Okay, still could be nice for sure. Okay, let's take a sip and then we'll head on down. Now with our newfound uh, god, Greed here, go Zag, and see how it goes. On to D5. Now, oh, another ring of stealth. All oh, right, my, may as well take off my ring of magical power. We're going to wear double stealth rings, which gives us a total of zero pips of stealth in our chainmail. Awesome. About what I expected, but thought maybe just maybe we'd get a single pip of stealth with those rings. Not that it should matter too much. Ooh. What do you have on you, Jib? Plus two dagger of draining, wand of polymorph. Have I been polymorphed before? I'm pretty sure I have. Let's try not to do it here. Hmm. So yeah, if we had some willpower, again, might be able to take care of that a little more safely, but fortunately not an option. So maybe we'll just back up, step out of sight lines here. Just trying to get her to close in. Perfect. Because I don't mind getting hit with the dagger of draining, but I didn't want to be polymorphed. But the jib zaps a wand, and we resisted with some effort, but then she zapped a wand again and turned us into a that. So, huh. let's look. Bat form flying. We are very quick, so we can easily run away. Oh, we are not made out of stone anymore, so bad, eh? Dang, we don't get our 4 AC. I was curious about that. But, we still have 44 health. So I'm gonna take a couple of hits here, see how we do as a bat. Not great, I tell ya. Ooh, and there's Pickle with their lemurs. So, let's use this bat form that we've been so blessed to be given here. And we'll just skirt around these buddies. Oh gosh. As the Psychonaut, submerged of will into righteous loving kindness, I am thus able to do anything worthwhile, invincible, indef indefatigable, everlasting as truth embodies us. Interesting. Don't know what to make of that. Oh gosh, I'm running into the unknown. Got so distracted by the brilliant display of wordmanship. So. Gathered all of this crew in our little flying around as a bat, dragged them into this corridor, which kind of worked out nicely. 
And now I'm gonna take a quick peek because Pickle behind here with the uh, nine damage plus the plus two whip of freezing is definitely interesting. But an adder, not too shabby. So using the V key, let's just stab past that buddy, hey? Whatsoever, supernatural, magical, or psychic ability, I can do barely. I am no psychopath. I'm a healer of the mind from Zeleron. That's good. I think we need healers of the mind in this day and age. And okay, that fight went all right. We just ended up crunching our way through most of these bad boys without too much of a care. I guess turning back into our usual form from a bat was uh, perfectly timed. But we'll keep making our way through D5 here. And okay, an orc warrior will be an interesting challenge to start out here. The <laughs> mind heals a well, it's ideal merit, yada yada yada. Exactly, you got it. And okay, so the warrior could have been a little bit scary just for how much damage they can dish out here, but fortunately got in a couple of lucky hits with the trident, especially being able to poke them from afar is a pretty solid little advantage for us. And that's a decent chunk of experience to pick up. It's fortunate there weren't some orc priests paired along with it, because that definitely could have turned things a little bit trickier. But okay, now that we have a polearm, also not quite so scared of the gnolls, especially one with a negative two halberd. Ooh, but now that's a good halberd as well as a gnoll sergeant here. So let's drag these buddies back. Want to make sure they come over the top here and that they don't cut me off heading to the stairs. Perfect. And maybe we'll do, hmm. Let's see, how much could we fight here without getting in danger? 11 plus 9 plus spear. Let's take a couple swings. Perfect, nothing a plus 11 trident can't take care of. And, okay, we took a couple of bad hits there, largely, I guess, due to the, the pain from Menkar here. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna pop up the stairs just rest up, heal ourselves so we don't have to worry about it, and then let's pop down, and I definitely want to fight Ankar here, because for the most part, for most melee classes, that's a pretty easy unique to take care of early, as long as you can not get completely wiped out by those early symbols of torments or pains, but went pretty well there, and that's another decent chunk of EXP under the belt. This run is definitely trying its best to make up for the lack of uniques that we ran into last time around. So that's a little bit scary if it is truly indicative of anything. And there we go again. Yet another unique in the early game here. But I can think I can take care of Eustachio, my favorite adventurer. I should have maybe checked, made sure he didn't have a wand or anything. But all's well that ends well. So let's just carry on here. And on to D6. Grofi the Skirmisher. Bringing peace and order to the dungeon. One thrust of his brutal weapon at a time. I guess in this case, we're very much spreading capitalism because Gozeg does only have one value, or one value that he uh, appreciates, I guess. He has many values as a, a deity and a individual. But okay, we found Grinder. This is where she turned up, ended up dropping, what was that, three floors in the end? So, wait, it might have even been four. Were we, was that as early as D2 that we ran into her? I guess let's take a quick right click to see how everything compares. Still extremely dangerous, still pretty good chance for Paralyze here. Hmm. Net will be pretty nice. Let's see, a polymorph, 46%, but changes her into a Chaos Bond, a Nicoxic, or an Inoxanil, none of which we want to deal with here. So, who knows? 
one day some oblivious goober is going to write a book based on this game a game based on this game a fork with a ridiculous amount of specials and backgrounds of unique combinations from the least easy to the most difficult and that is me oh yeah which uh which fork were you thinking of because i haven't actually tried out too many of them myself but because i've kind of dabbled as a, a lurker on the reddit i have a very cursory understanding of some of the mechanics in a couple of the forks but also very cool i always support uh literature and authors because writing is super awesome i've definitely tried to write myself and it can be very hard to keep both motivated and um i know focused i guess but that's largely due to just my own issues as well, of course. But people encourage me to write a book, so why not one about sharing openly what we have to give? I'm afraid I want to make sure it would not shatter the real world. Always got to be careful of that. But no, I definitely encourage writing a book. Always. It's good to hear voices see what people have to say and especially for stuff like um, DCSS where it has a really strong but kind of niche fan base I'm sure people would really appreciate seeing some really cool fiction being brought into it I guess it wouldn't have to be fiction you could do a, a non-fiction series that involves playing DCSS maybe that's the, the beauty of writing is there are just so many paths and directions you can take stories. I actually really enjoyed just the other day. I don't spend much time on Twitter, much like everywhere else on the internet. I very much just occasionally lurk in, never really post anything. But the other day there was the, a hashtag trending that was hit something. But it was really cool. It was people just having to pitch story ideas that they're writing um, in 260 words or less. And it's always really interesting to see both how people pitch their stories, what kind of path they take in narrative, as well as just the content itself. Super interesting. I wish I had more time to read. That's something I miss from good old days of being a kid. It's just unlimited reading time. Mm, okay, well, I guess a weapon shop not super useful to us considering that we have kind of settled into this trident for the time being and I do really Think that we could hold on to it as much as How many of our runs have ended up being polar arm users now? I wonder quite a few I think But what can I do when RNG is gonna hand it to me? You just gotta take it sometimes and there we go, finally took care of Grinder after a couple of potentially scary encounters, but not too shabby. And keep it going. It'd be like, it would be like 13 perspectives represented by the more you stare, the funnier it gets macros, three motivationals staring at a 13 fold prism forming an esper of unknown anonymous quality that probably ends up making people speculative fantasy fiction authors or other things that truly serve and i fear for the beast riders i see that is a bit of a scary vault luckily we don't have to fight any of these ghosts and priests here and that is d6 all done here I literally have typed essays online and don't want that happening again. Can definitely understand that. Sounds good. I will not make you do so either. No worries. Hmm. Don't think there's anything too interesting in this shop. In particular, I was briefly caught by this chainmail, but. That will minus is kind of unfortunate. I should at least maybe highlight this because that is something we could think about using in the future when we have other items to kind of fill up the, the willpower slots for us. 
Even though, again, judging by previous games, not likely that's going to work out quite that well for us. But Wow, commerce! Hey, that's the, the name of the game when you're following Gozeg. Each and every one of those shops is an altar and a shrine to the one and only true god. Capitalism. I mean, Gozeg, of course. Greed is good. And plus, at the end of it all, you yourself get to turn into a giant pile of gold. You get to turn into your favorite thing on death. So, all's good with Go's Egg. Okie dokie. I'm pretty sure Go's Egg also has some interesting uh, mechanics for leaving the, the religion, because I don't believe Go's Egg cares. You don't get anything back, for sure. You know, the money you spent and all the shops you call in, I think, might close down if you abandon Go's Egg. But otherwise, pretty sure all they care about is gold. So it's a pretty solid god for when you want to switch over to someone like the Shining One in the late game, or the extended late game, I should say. But. I think there are quite a few options, DD options now, that allow that kind of flexibility, which I really appreciate. I think it's a lot of fun to have the options to float around without it being just too easy, too obvious. But okay, ran into an early centaur warrior there. Luckily, they were just adjacent to us, but that could have been a tricky fight as well. But having taken the fight or taken victory there, uh, it does give us a huge amount of experience. And in fact, I think I'm going to turn off fighting for a little bit. should also make sure shields doesn't go too high. So that 15. Because I'm liable to potentially forget about those, unfortunately. When the snake fight enters your game, never did I want to kill that mean snake, but he attacked first. It's not the same as refrain in self. Discipline unvain. Nice. Like the the pros, the literary pros there. The railroad. I've only played with Sith Moon as a god, and I've never abandoned her. It's definitely, actually, off the top of my head now, I'm not sure if I've ever abandoned a deity. I talk about it, and I think about it every once in a while, but usually I end up just yeah getting too used to the mechanics of whoever I'm following at the time, and kind of want to play it out. Plus, there's something to you know, showing your devotion to your your god. Take a couple swings at the open air there. Not sure if we hit on the uh, sky beast. Let's see, before it became visible, did I... No, we missed it with our random stab. That's too bad, but totally fine. Okay, an ogre is a bit tricky here. Hmm. So we have all of our potion petition available now in case we really need to dip into that, hoping for yeah, haste, berserk, healing, any of those necessary ones. <laughs> Bo is the only true god, praise his green magnificence. See, I do need to play more Bo because just getting into that at the start of this Win With Every Species series did just give me a glimpse into the, the truth of that statement. Orc Messiah is the only way to go. Okay, wait a second. What are you? I thought that this was a Sky Beast at first, but it's jumping around, which kind of scares me. We wouldn't see get an Unseen Horror at this time, right? Okay, we killed it. I'll never know what it was. Something invisible that jumps around. Huh. Just, mind is completely drawing a blank for some reason as to what that could be. Oh, maybe... Like a, a ghost of some kind? Did we show up at this level? I don't know my mid-level enemies very well, I guess. Nothing's coming to mind. If anyone in chat has any ideas, I'm kinda curious. Oh, there we go. Howler Monkey Sauce is drawing all the attention, so let's back up here. 
Make sure we don't get completely surrounded by bumblebees in the, uh, out in the open. But otherwise, it kind of works out having this uh, attention drawn to us, I guess. Got to take out a decent amount of the level there, not too shabby. And he's taking out enemies left and right here. This is definitely one of the, the stronger phases in the Gargoyle Fighter game, just because most of the enemies are completely negated by either AC or just smart play. What the heck? Never mind. Scratch everything I was just saying. Because that dragon is a bit of a different story. Run, run, run. <laughs> just all the way back. So that was the downstairs here. I'm tempted to just skip this floor, but I'm gonna skirt along here. I could get fire breath, maybe. Actually, maybe not. What is the range is five? Oh, okay, so they're taking their turn to step. Never mind, all good there. But hopefully, we can leave this dragon kind of trapped in this corner and still explore just a little bit of the level. I'd really like to find like a lair entrance or something. We're on the opposite side of the map at least, so feel a little comfortable exploring around a tiny bit here. We'll see how things go. I'm definitely, I can see myself accidentally letting auto explore take us right to the dragon, is what I was going to say. There we go, that's a good indication of why we don't want to stick around with the fire breath. Oh lord. Okay, don't run into any enemies. Please, nobody come up behind us here. Jeez Louise. So the dragon must have spawned as part of that, like, lava vault there. Hmm. Oh. The dragon was guarding Lair, because Lair was this lava vault. That's scary. Just a wee bit frightening. Um, we have no sources of fire resistance. I mean, we could go back and buy that chainmail, but we'd be screwing ourselves over for any uh, magic users we ran into. Hmm. Because normally I would kind of just... Uh, or I would potentially go into lair here. That's what I was thinking. Maybe avoid having to run around this fire dragon, but I wouldn't mind a little more experience. I'm used to at least exploring all of like D8, D9 without too much trouble. Hmm. So the other thing is I could just head down a stair, start exploring around D9, hope that we don't run into anything too scary. The danger is that one of the stairways down there will pop us out here and there might be a fire dragon nearby. So we could have issues retreating from enemies on the lower floor here. So let's try it out. Never say die. We we'll definitely step into the corridor here just to make sure I only have to take down from one of these buddies at a time. There we go. Also got our orc entrance, which is nice to get out of the way. It's good to know where those early branch choices are for sure. There we go. As long as we get first hit on these buddies, or I guess a decent opportunity to hit these buddies. Not too scary, even though that two of them at once got a little bit trickier there for sure. Ooh, and Grum. Not too scary. Huh. Used to running into him a little bit earlier, I guess. You know, wolves, these are a bit scary, I guess, especially if we were out in the open. Not able to run back to a hallway. Okay, unfortunately, we have to stab past at Grum here, otherwise Grum will continue hitting us with his spear the whole time. Anyway, so... Oh my gosh, we might accidentally take out all of the closer wolves. And we did. Took out all the pack before actually managing to land those hits successfully. I should actually look up how that works, because I'm not 100% sure how... Um, 
the math works on trying to stab past an enemy to hit the enemy that's standing behind them. But okay, two-headed ogre, pretty frightening at this stage of the game. Could uh, definitely lay down the hurt quite <laughs> prodigiously here. So, could potentially throw something like a polymorph. No, not great chances, and some of those things we turn it into are scarier in a sense. But that makes sense, because this is a pretty scary enemy for D9 in general. So, is that just going to be a retreat from us? Looking like it might be. Having a couple of rightful enemies on these floors here. But I guess before we finish this retreating motion, let's talk about the entire plan because we could run back up and head down into lair potentially see if we can at all cut our teeth down there fortunately we do have our poison innately here so that solves a lot of potential issues with going there a little bit earlier than expected otherwise like orc don't necessarily oh wait Am I actually running the wrong way for the stairs? Okay, not really. I can cut down here. I was heading towards the downstairs like a fool instead of this upstairs down here. But Orcish Mine is another place we could go, but it is on this level, so that kind of scares me of popping out to this buddy in our face. So, I guess it probably will be a retreat to Lair, or we try and fight this buddy. But as we kind of did a quick peek there, not looking great. We could try an Icy Blast and stuff, I guess. No evocations. Don't imagine we'll do a whole lot. How's this, actually? It's kind of a middle ground here. I'm going to throw a net. If it manages to capture the buddy, we'll take a couple of turns to maybe lay on some hurt. What? We can gather that later. Let's do one more net. Perfect. So then we're just going to lay down the hurt a little bit here. See how the first couple blasts go? Pretty awesome. I'd like to kill you before you break our net. Please don't break our net. Ooh, we might have done it. Perfect. We did get our net back and everything, but awesome. Always got to make sure to use the, the overpowered nature of nets early game here. Get some free tax in on a powerful enemy, and holy cow, that's another decent chunk of EXP in a row here.